Welcome to the first episode of Burly Boy Summer, a special hodgepodge episode, Haunted Bookshop Cake. Let's take a look at that blend. All right, here we have Cornell and Dill's Haunted Bookshop. Now, what it is comprised of is Red Virginia, Bright Virginia, Perique, and Burley. Now, again, this version is the cake version. Uh, not any different as far as components go, as far as the blend is concerned to the, ori to the original. Um, it's just in a cake form. Here is a piece of, of the cake rubbed out. As you can tell, it seems to be very heavy burly. Based on the shade of brown that I am seeing, it looks closer to, to this right here. Um, it is some kind of combination of the Burley, Virginia, and Perique. Um, but, you know, everybody knows, I mean, most people know Haunted Bookshop is a pretty burly blend. Um, it's, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, it's just heavy in that. And, and from past experience, you know, that's I know that to be true. Um, but when you get into these kind of... You know, when you get into where there's a lot of Virginia and Burley mixed in, it's kind of hard to pick out that red from the Burley. Um, but, you know, there's some dark spots that are no doubt the Perique. Now, let's take a look at this little little chunk that they gave us, this little bite-sized little piece of the cake here. And, uh, you know, it seems to be a very, you know, well-done cake. You know, I know in the past, you know, me and Zach have our problems with plug, but... I've never had a problem with cake, you know, uh, most notably the uh, Seattle Pipe Club, you know, there's comes in a, uh, the, the um, plum pudding comes in a crumble cake. So cake is, I'm, I'm very happy with cake. It's easy to rub out. It's um, really just, you know, the best of both worlds when it, between ribbons and flake because, um, you know, you can, it, it packs easy like a, or not packs it travels well like a flake but then it's also probably easier to rub out than a flake i don't know it just depends on the blend this one seems to be very easy to rub out so um let's go over there and see how haunted bookshop cake smokes so that was haunted bookshop um for those of you in the ytpc you know that this is a special blend to matches 860 um not the cake variant but uh haunted bookshop by itself mm -hmm. And John was a burly boy himself. So. Yeah, he's one of the originals. He is the original he, man. So, he, oh, shoot. this kind of this has a special place, I think, in the YTPC. I know a lot of people yeah. took a lot from John and his mm -hmm. videos, which were always good. So, mm -hmm. a little, uh, I guess, a little send up to him since he's one of the OG burly boys. Yeah, but uh, yeah, man, like this is a this is a crossover blend because it's not just burly. It it feels like it's a hodgepodge. And it's all it's a, it's it's like a mutant blend. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I want to say preface a couple things. One, you know, there's no difference between it and cake, or between cake and the regular as far as the components. So, you know, when we talk about this one, we're talking about both variants, right? Um, but but also yes, it, you know, in doing these uh, hodgepodge blends or videos, we've uh, I know Zach has alluded to that this kind of feels like the modern hodgepodge. So. It um, is, yeah, it definitely is. It's like the, yeah. it's, it seems like older pipe smokers are drawn to this. I feel like that's because this blend is reminiscent of Sir Walter Raleigh to a certain extent. And to, um, to a lesser degree, Carter Hall. Mm. Um, I know that it doesn't have like an aromatic twinge to it as heavily as those other ones. Yeah. But I think, um... I think that there's enough kinship in the blend that it's easy for someone who may have just done a hodgepodge over the counter that this is their modern variant. Yeah. Um, not a lot can be said that hasn't been said. This blend will always be a mystery to me because on paper, I really shouldn't care that much for it. But yeah. when I smoke it, I'm reminded of sort of the early days of my pipe smoking, like, I won't say career, but that's not right. <laughs> Just the early days of pipe smoking for me, where, yeah. you know, I, I think that when you're fumbling through pipe tobacco, you definitely, in the beginning, have a, 
um, an obligation in, in, in the most like sophomoric way to judging books by their cover. And dead gummit, if Haunted Bookshop doesn't reel everyone I know who sees its tin in, I don't know what to tell you. If, you. if you were one of the lucky few who were just like, nah, I'll read reviews. I don't need to pick up something called Haunted Bookshop. This is the one that really got me. Um, I said, Haunted Bookshop. I'm a reader. I like pipe smoking. I like spooky stuff. I like spooky things. And I literally just picked it up and started smoking it. Um... What's up, beard? Yeah. <laughs> My dad just pulled up. That's so funny. I didn't know when he was going to get here. I guess he's going to get here early. Yeah. I love it that we're we're doing a we're doing a we're doing a hodgepodge blend, and look what we didn't just drag in here, but a codger himself. <laughs> That's my dad. <laughs> but <laughs> we'll interrupt this broadcast. But I, like, as soon as you smoke this stuff, old men just show up. If that doesn't tell you, tell you this, this, is, this is a modern codger blend. So, yeah. um, and apparently, it's a it, my dogs love it too because my dogs are going ape right now. Uh, yeah, I mean. You know, this was one of my favorites when we first started, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, I, it's a good blend. It was not bad. But I hadn't had it in several years, and uh, girls up. yeah, the girls were up. You gonna take the dogs in for me? Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, so you know, I had I haven't smoked what it. What in the world just happened? Like you said, Codgers, Codgers just the, the, magnetized the, into the, this. The pipe smoke whiffs into the air, and then they I love it too because like you guys saw my yard, and it's a it's a nightmare. <laughs> Freaking! I like it's been raining nonstop. I can't cut the grass, and I push it, so it's like a night. And there's a swamp over there, basically. So you're not riding it you're, <laughs> unless you've planned to get stuck. I, I hired a guy to cut it the first couple of weeks we were here, and he like rode right out there and just got stuck. I had to help him get out. <laughs> so I got to ride. I got to push push mower. And anyway, this is this is a lot. This is kind of a well. Welcome to Burley Boy Summer. What a weird episode this has begun. But um, yeah, you're saying you love this blend. <laughs> well, I, you know, it was one of the first ones that I that I gravitated to. And I, um, man, you know, it, it was good. And uh, I think I put it in a tin and it dried out on me, right? And, you know, I just never went back to it. I kind of... Well, you put it in a jar, didn't you? And it dried out. It dried out on me. I guess I... In a jar? It. Yeah, I must have not been holding my mouth right. <laughs> That's a... When you, what hey, what when am you, I going fishing with you? Dude, what? that's what my... You know how many old fishermen have told me that? They're like, I'm like, I ain't catching nothing. Like, you ain't holding your mouth right. Hey, listen, when you smoke codgers, the codger comes out in you. <laughs> but but the, the funny thing was, I just, you know, I got busy doing other blends and, you know, smoking them and whatnot. And, um, you know, it, <laughs> I just never came back to it, right? And uh, so... We got this, start smoking, and I'm like, man, I don't know. I, I kind of got worried. I was like, am I, am I not going to like it? Have I grown out of the blend? Mm-hmm. You know, because that's happened with me a little bit with some blends that we've been smoking lately. You know, that we've always liked, but I kind of felt like I grew out of them. And um, uh, they stick with you. They stick with you, but like your affinity for them fades. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm hating them forever is like trying to nail Jello to a tree. <laughs> yeah. You can't do it. You, right. It's going to come back. This is going to be that episode. <laughs> You're just going to throw as much codgery nonsense, southern wisdom as you can to it. <laughs> southern wisdom as you can. It, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, you're right. But, you know, then I smoked the blend, this cake version, right? Um, and, man, I tell you what. I mean, it was like it was like meeting an old friend, you know, for, for the first time. Yeah. Know? And... Um, you know, I was a little worried at first because it's a cake, so I'm like, I know it's going to be a little bit more um, moist, and so I wanted to let it dry. So I, you know, I let it sit there, and I was like, I'll come back in two shakes of a lamb's tail, and and check on it, and <laughs> and uh, you know, it. Uh, so I tried it that way, and man, it was yeah, it yeah. I mean, it, it's still a good blend. I, I need to 
it makes me want to keep smoking it again because it is such a good blend. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think it, it, it hits a lot of... It's no Solani, aged Burley Flake. No, and when you look at it, it's got a face for radio. It ain't the most attractive <laughs> blend I've ever seen. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Even in the cake form, it's not it's not a super appetizing looking blend. No, but, but then I'll tell you this, though. I, uh, just to try it out, I just took a chunk because it came with one big old cake uh, crumble cake little brownie kind of thing and then a few little small ones so I just broke off a piece of the small one stuck it in my pipe smoked it it still smokes fine you really one don't have thing, to man, one of the the hallmarks of Picardra blends is their their consistent burn rate mm. I think they burn all very consistently yeah. almost like they're almost they come out of the tin just almost perfect yeah, I mean, they don't have to do too much. They're not very fussy. There's some blends. Which probably lends it to being codger. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, when you get outside of the codger blends, there's some blends out there where right when you open up the tin, it's almost like their cornbread ain't done in the middle or something. And, you know, you just got to give it some time. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so, but with codgers, it's like right out of the gate, you're, you know, you're... You know, you're hauling it, you know. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think I'd have to agree with you. This is a modern conjure. But also, that's not a negative in the in the aspect that I've liked. Well, actually, no, I guess not. I've, only, I've really only liked Sir Walter Raleigh. Uh, you know, Carter Hall was so close but just subpar. And then Captain Black was, mm. you know, it was what it was. Yeah. Um, but... It, it, mm. This kind of reminds me of like the the bridger between Sir Walter Raleigh and, and Solani. It's right. kind of like if you like both, then this is kind of like a good happy middle. Yeah, you know what I mean. It, it gives you that burly that you really want, the nutty, the the pepperiness um, of the paricas that's in there, and then just the sweetness quality of the Virginias. Because it's I guess it's a Vapor, is it not? Yeah, I think so. And you've grown more accustomed to the Vapors, mm-hmm. so. I think it's very palatable, yeah. you know? I mean, it just, it works. It works on all the notes that you need it to work on, which is good. Yeah. You know, I don't think that, I don't think anything is taken away from um, the, when we call it a codger, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't limit it in terms of flavoring, for sure. I still enjoy it, and um, I think it has... Uh, a consistent flavor, which is sometimes all I really want. Yeah, just some consistency, you know, throughout the bowl. Um, and, you know, you don't want to be, a lot of times you don't want to be too surprised. Um, but, you know, I, I, I kind of don't, I don't know, talking in the Codger blends as a whole, kind of leaving Haunted Bookshop for a minute, you know, I came in with a negative connotation that a lot of these were just not going to be that grand, right? Mm-hmm. And, you know, we first start off with Sir Walter Raleigh, which hit it out of the park, right? And, you know, I, I kind of think, well, you know, a broken uh, broom only works twice a year. <laughs> so, like, you know, I was afraid that maybe, you know, I found the one good codger, mm-hmm. you know. But, and that may still be the case, you know. Mm-hmm. But, but then, you know, Haunted Bookshop, if we're going to relegate it to codger, I think the relegate might probably be the wrong word. But I think it's an elevated codger. Yeah. But mo- modern elevated. I mean, you know, Sir Walter Raleigh couldn't whoop a picture of Haunted Bookshop. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it just. Yeah. I mean, a blind hog finds an acorn every once in a while. And, every once in a while. And, you know, it's just. I saw Sir Walter Raleigh was good. Haunted Bookshop is good, um, and I, I, I think I think there's a reason why it's a very popular blend. And I think it, 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 you know, you need to respect that the pipe community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think it's just a mainstay. I think you enjoy it. Yeah, Job yeah. Like it for sure. Maybe not. I don't think we could ever call this rotational. I don't know, man. I, after getting back to it, man, I don't know. I think I, I, I kind of want to, though. Really? <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to. Mm. I kind of do. Because 
it just uh, there's a, there's a there's a comfort to it. Yeah. You smoke it, and it yeah. just there's there's comfort. You know. Well, you better paint your ceiling paint blue to keep them specters away. I tell you what. Maybe we need to come up with a blend. And call it Specter Bookstop. Specter Bookstop. <laughs> Specter Bookstore. Specter Bookstop. It's where the ghosts go. <laughs> Uh, this is an episode, I'll tell you that. It's a good way to start off Burly Boy Burly Summer. Boy Summer is just full of, like, I don't know, man. We're we just going to try to do Codger jokes for the rest of our Codger Blend series. <laughs> Probably. Why haven't we already? I don't know, man. I don't know where that came from. I mean, I don't know either, man. This is definitely, I think this is an easier episode to do it with because I think everyone and their mothers reviewed Haunted Bookshop. Yeah, I mean, if you if you're watching us, you're watching us. I mean, you probably could, you're not watching for information on haunted bookshop. I mean, I've gone all across the world, half of Georgia, and everywhere <laughs> I found people who smoke haunted bookshop. Yeah, you know, yeah, everyone <laughs> smokes haunted bookshop. I mean, it's man, it, it's just one of those blends. It and you you wonder does the name has the reputation outweighed the the, the quality? But I don't think so. I think it. I think it, it earns its popularity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think so. You know, I mean, I remember um, we went on vacation to Europe, and I went to Rome, yeah. and I was looking at the blends, and Haunted Bookshop was there, and I asked for it, and the Italian guy behind the thing, like, I'm gonna do kind of an impression of him. He goes, okay. Boy, that's one hell of a blend, right? There. <laughs> that's true Italian. <laughs> true Italian. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't speak Italian, but I understood him. So, <laughs> what the hell of a now, were you were you in Rome or were you in uh, the Vatican? I was, I was just outside the Vatican. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. <laughs> His name was Herschel. <laughs> oh, well, all roads lead to Rome, so yeah. and that's where haunted bookshop is. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, listen. Am I going to smoke this every day? Does the Pope shit in the woods? <laughs> Is a bear Catholic? Is a bear Catholic? But <laughs> mm. well, yeah. No, I think uh, to sum it up, I think check it out. I think if you you probably already have, I think that this is absolutely something that you could throw in and smoke once a year, and it would it would good it'd be good for you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you can tell by me by my. How I'm acting, you know, I like it, you know, and I yeah. think, I, you know, like I said, I was kind of worried that I would, that I grew out of it, but I didn't. Yeah, it's still, it's still there, yeah. and it still stays with you, no matter what. And I hate to be a sellout and get the dead gum cake when there doesn't need to be a cake. Well, though we reviewed the cake because the cake doesn't seem to be reviewed very often, but it's the same blend. I, I, I'm telling you, there's no difference in the two. No, but, one's press, one's not. Does it meld the flavors together? Not really. No, it doesn't do anything. Look, pick cake, pick regular, OG, it doesn't matter. It ain't. You're not going to taste any difference. The only thing I would say is because I have had a history of it drying out, I will probably only ever get the cake because I'm sure its, it's moisture content will keep it, you know, at the right moisture level longer. Mm-hmm. So I probably will always get the cake, as much, much to my chagrin, but... Well, maybe that's what it's lending itself to. Maybe it's a little bit more, um, you know, long-lasting if you're in the cake. Yeah. As far as moisture content's concerned. Yeah, and just the the amount that I smoke regularly doesn't lend itself to... I, I have to store it in some way. I've even gone, and this doesn't do anything for aging, but I've even gone to the point where I, now I'm vacuum sealing my my blends because you know it's not going to age but at least it's going to stay the moisture content at least that it's at um and so that's to the extent that i've gone yeah so you know well i think mama's calling us home yes sir i think supper's on the table yep so biscuits are ready yeah them cat heads Alright, y'all be good. It's a little random, but whether you love uh, 
we love coming on and talking to you. So yeah, <laughs> we'll see you. <laughs>